The Ministry of Trade and Industry has refuted allegations of bribery in asking destination inspection companies to pay $35 million in exchange for government contracts. Director of Communications and Public Affairs of the Ministry of Trade, Nana Akresi Sapon, says the arrangement was to save Ghana a higher judgment debt. The Minister of Trade has come under severe criticism for writing to five destination inspection companies, GICs, to pay an amount of $35 million each to help defray a judgment debt of some 197 million cities owed to Bank Switch. We have been working with these destination inspection companies for over 10 years. Every five years, we renew their contract. And they are the very people who are mostly going to be affected as far as uh, 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 this uh, 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 arrangement is concerned because it is it is part of their work right and so if we we we, we request them to express their interest in defraying this judgment debt is that why should somebody see it as bribery bribery in what sense some members of parliament have argued the DICs must go through thorough procurement processes before they can be given any contract to perform by the minister asking them to pay money for contracts is dicey. According to the trade ministry, the action taken by Mr. Spilgabra was in the country's favor. Our idea is to save the government and for that matter, the good people of Ghana from paying over one billion cities within the next five years to a company for no work done. With several calls for the resignation of the trade minister, Mr. Spilgabra, the minister is consulting his lawyers and is prepared to take legal action against anyone who attacks his integrity and competence. The ministry is of the view that the issue at stake should be discussed, taking into consideration the payment of judgment debt through no work done. So let's get to agriculture and some business now as farmers in the three regions in the northern part of the country are worried about the delay in this year's rains. Now the rains are three months behind schedule. The farming calendar for the northern sector of Ghana has always started in March, while harvesting begins in July and August through to December. However, the situation is different this year. It is late June and farming activities are yet to commence. After a long period of wait for rains, some farmers cannot wait any longer. Since we planted about two weeks before we get the rain, some are dying. Two weeks time and we didn't get rain. Some of us will cry because we use plenty of money here. Equipped with traditional farming implements, hoes and machetes, the farmers are hoping to ensure food security in support of Millennium Development Go One. The director of the Earth Institute in Colombia, Professor Jeffrey Sachs, attributed the poor yield to climate change. There are structural challenges, geographical challenges, climate and resource challenges. Part of the development challenge is climate. And this country exemplifies a climate gradient. The rainfall also diminishes from the coast to the north, very systematically. He called on Ghana to move away from rain-fed agriculture. This is an agricultural region, so agribusiness will be probably the major business for the coming 20 years agribusiness and processing of agricultural goods. So not just primary agricultural products, but also processing of agricultural products. If we have an agricultural system that can depend on energy, skilled workers, better transport conditions, better communications conditions, solar-powered irrigation, solar-powered pumps, we can see a big rise of productivity in this region. Professor Jeffrey Sachs suggested non-tamed crops like the shear nut, baobab, the locust beans trees, and many others should be given special attention to improve living standards in the northern sector. SADA is also coming up with technical support to farmers, including construction of irrigation dams. 
Now some revenue matters. Commissioner of the Ghana Revenue Authority, George Blankson, has charged manufacturers to give early notice to the customs division should disaster occur at the warehouses before the cleanup. Now he warned disposal of damaged goods before the notice could affect claims of concessions. A team of officials from the Ghana Revenue Authority visited some warehouses and manufacturing companies affected by the June 3 disaster in Aveno and North Kanishi Industrial Area in Accra. DRA discussed with owners how to minimize the impact of such occurrences on their taxes. For those in manufacturing, all the raw materials that they imported at concessionary rates of tax, if they are affected by the floods, if they get damaged, they can't on their own destroy them. Insofar as such raw materials were imported and admitted at concessionary rates, customs as revenue interests. Assistant Commissioner in charge of Accra Collection, Christiana Akoto Bamfo assured, bonded warehouse owners could start accessing claims in seven days. For bonded warehouses, by law, it's mandatory to have a bond in place. Two bonds, one for premises for the security of the revenue and one for removal of goods when bonded warehouse goods are being removed. So we have actually been able to gather all those bonds. It's mandatory. A valid bond has to be in place all the time. We will forward it to our commissioner for legal and the top management to advise us accordingly. Although all warehouse owners were unable to disclose the worth of goods destroyed, it was established that most of them had halted production while others had reduced production capacity. Continental African Trading, distributors of pharmaceutical products, has lost anti-malarial drugs, chemicals for infusion and infusion bags estimated at $2 million. Auto Center Ghana, auto spare parts wholesalers, had also got 80% of its goods destroyed by the floods. Most of the items which were destroyed by, by the anti-malaria, it's, it's affected us and then Ghana as, as a country. That documents of some of the companies were destroyed by the flood. The team visited six warehouses and manufacturers who had been worst hit by the disaster. Let's do some insurance now. Enterprise Group Limited recorded a 61.3 million CD profit last year compared to 40 million CDs in 2013, representing a 54.5% growth. Group Chairman Trevor Trevna made this known at a group's annual general meeting here in Accra. Enterprise Group is a holding company of Enterprise Insurance, Enterprise Life, Enterprise Trustees and Enterprise Properties. Group Chairman Trevor Trevgan admitted macroeconomic targets had been missed as a result of declining economic activity, but the group showed strong growth driven by higher investment income. Group profit after tax improved against prior year 2013 by 54.5%, primarily on account of higher investment income driven by the higher yields on fixed income and material fair value gains on investment properties. A 40% divestiture in enterprise insurance company also impacted favorably, leading to high dividend for shareholders. The disposal of 40% of the group's equity in enterprise insurance company limited to Sandland Emerging Markets favorably impacted reserves and cash resources. Your board therefore decided to distribute the greater part of the consideration to shareholders, resulting in a total payout of 25.1 million Ghana CDs, representing 0.19 Ghana CDs per share. Group Chief Executive Officer Kelly Gajipo spoke on innovative ways the group managed to attract clients. What we did uh, which we call a one-off is that because we are divested of 40 percent of our general insurance business uh, we distributed most of the proceeds of that uh, of that divestment to shareholders it's our way of saying to shareholders that uh, they own the business and if there's a windfall the money belongs to them the enterprise group intends to continue with its funeral services subsidiary in the fourth quarter, which has been put on hold. 
Well, just before we round it up, if you have enough, you give back to society, and that's just what Guinness Ghana Breweries Limited has done. They've commissioned 10 water projects in the Ewutu Senya West District of the Central Region. Now, the 540,000 Ghana City projects were being founded by Guinness Ghana Breweries Limited under its Water of Life program. It is to provide sustainable, clean drinking water to communities. The project comprises four mechanized systems and six boreholes in eight beneficiary communities, including Asempaneye, Bewenum, Fianco, Jankwanta, Bodriase Health Center, among others. Speaking at the function at Asempaneye near Ewutu, Bodriase, the communication and engagement manager of Guinness Ghana, Rita Roxon, said the company is committed to enriching the lives of communities. It sources some of its materials from. Guinness Ghana in 2012 introduced Boot Extra Beer. Boot Extra Beer um, is Ghana's first cassava beer, uh, brewed with cassava. Um, sourced locally from what you are saying. With our engagement with the local community and the leadership um, of, of the district, we decided to invest um, in the community with our Water of Life project. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Hannah Tete, said Guinness Ghana has set the pace and entreated other businesses to follow. The root beer product, which is Guinness's product that they make with cassava from the Ayensu Starch Factory, has 50% local content, which is cassava. And so it is a significant amount of local content. And it's important for us because, of course, not only does it create a nice new product, but it also encourages the kind of backward integration that we want in the manufacturing sector that supports the creation of local industry. All right, so that's all we have for you in business. My name is Kwe Kutumin.